What's going on here, YouTube, and welcome back to another comic book video. This is the channel where we sit down and cover different comic book stories from different comic book companies. Today, we're going to jump back over to Marvel Comics and continue our X-Men reading order. And we're going to pick up with Uncanny X-Men number 151 and 152. With that being said right there, this is a two-part story where we see Storm and Emma Frost actually switch bodies which does make a very interesting story to see and so with that being said right there i do hope you enjoy today's comic book video because if you do hit that like button down below and subscribe also any suggestions on books i should read well please let me know in the comments below because you never know your suggestion could be a future video down the road but here is uncanny x-men number 151 and 152 so in the opening of this book, we pick up with Charles Xavier, who has gotten a letter from the parents of Kitty Pride. The reason why is because we are finding out that Kitty Pride parents wants her to change schools and put Kitty Pride into a school where the other students are around the same age, which honestly, they are not wrong because the students at Charles Xavier school are all mostly young adults, except Wolverine, who's like really old. That dude is old like no other. This is just the beginning of this short little two-part story that is actually pretty interesting. So after some time has passed by, we pick up with Storm checking up on Kitty Pride to see how she feels about changing schools. We see that Kitty Pride had looked up the school she is being transferred to. It is called Massachusetts Academy, and the school is being run by... Emma Frost. At this point, Emma Frost is still a bad guy that belongs to the Hellfire Club. Of course, the evil organization of mutants that wants to use mutants to make money at this point. Now, the last time the X-Men fought her, Jean Grey was the one to beat her in a battle between psychics. But Jean Grey is dead now. Now, this moment of the story begins an argument between Kitty Pride and Storm about going to the school. Her parents not knowing what's best for her because they are getting a divorce. But Storm calls her selfish for wanting her parents to stay together and then realize what she said is messed up. The next day, we pick up with Storm taking Kitty Pride to the school. So we see Kitty Pride saying goodbye to everyone before she gets in the car. You then have Storm drive her to Emma Frost School. This is Storm making sure the school is safe and not some kind of trick that Emma Frost has up her sleeve. But while Kitty Pride is away checking out her room, Emma Frost comes to greet Storm to tell Storm this was a trap and then there's a flash of lights except the next panel we see storm saying goodbye to storm wait no storm saying goodbye to kitty pride leaving us wondering what happened to storm when she was confronted by emma frost we don't get the chance to learn at first what happened with storm because the story continues with storm saying goodbye to kitty pride then we see storm get back in the car and leave but this is when we see Storm beginning to use her powers very openly. Like she is happy about having her powers. And of course, you would be confused because you are wondering, why is she acting like this? Don't worry, because Chris Claremont doesn't take long to explain to us what in the world is going on. We kind of find out that Storm and Emma Frost have changed bodies. Thanks to Emma Frost's powers, she was able to take over the body of Storm. And then she called up Sebastian Shaw, letting us know that the Hellfire Club is back in the picture again. And they're going to do something to the X-Men. If you are wondering about Storm, well, she is trapped in Emma Frost's body and they locked her away in some kind of room because Emma Frost told her team to do that. Getting back to the X-Men at the mansion, while they were having a good old time chilling, well that is the moment where you have a bunch of sentinels pop out of nowhere and they are beginning to attack the X-Men. Now, 
to the X-Men, they are wondering who has restarted the Sentinel program. Last time they saw them was back in Uncanny X-Men number 98 through 100. Of course, they fought them in space, and that moment gave birth to the Phoenix later on. Remember, back in the Dark Phoenix Saga, Sebastian Shaw, the leader of the Hellfire Club, had teamed up with Robert Kelly because Robert Kelly hated mutants as we saw in the Days of Future Past storyline. But before that, he talked to Shaw about the idea of restarting the Sentinel program, not knowing that Shaw is a mutant. Either way, the X-Men are struggling, but they are able to take these robots down quickly. Nightcrawler's girlfriend is there too, but she can't help. Now, Emma Frost, who is pretending to be Storm, appears, and she goes on to use her powers to take out one more Sentinel, making it seem that she is on their side. But it was only a way for her to get close so she can use Storm powers to knock out the X-Men to capture them. Getting back to Storm, who is in the body of Emma Frost, we see her being able to use her thief skills that she gathered when she was young to break out of the room. Then of course gets away from the guards so that she is able to go and save Kitty Pride and get out of there. Except just like Emma Frost can use Storm powers in Storm's body, well it is the same for Storm. She can use Emma Frost powers since Storm is trapped in the body of Emma Frost. Except she goes on to knock out Kitty Pride on accident. To Storm, she thinks that she had just killed Kitty Pride with a psychic blast. Now, the next issue, we skip some moments and pick up with Emma Frost using the body of Storm to stop Storm because after Storm had knocked out Kitty Pride, she just put Kitty Pride in the car and began to drive back to the mansion. Kitty Pride still has no idea that it is Storm in the body of Emma Frost. So when she wakes up, she freaks out and begins to face out of the car. That makes Storm go off road and crash somewhere in the woods. To Emma Frost, she thinks that Storm and Kitty Pride are dead or they have hidden somewhere deep in the woods. We do get this reminder of what happened in the previous chapter, but we get this when Kitty Pride wakes up. It is her just remembering what had happened to her before the car scene. That is when she sees Storm, but thinks it is Emma Frost, not Storm, wandering to save her from the burning car, but she does out of being a good person. The next page, we see Emma Frost thinking that her old body is gone. So she is upset that her body may be gone. You didn't have Sebastian Shaw kind of calm her down and tell her that he still loves her so much. Lies. Back to Storm and Kitty Pryde. We see Kitty Pryde have tied up Storm to make sure it is her. After a couple panels, you have Storm being able to convince Kitty Pryde that it is her and they need to go and save the rest of the X-Men from Emma Frost and the Hellfire Club. Of course, that is the moment where the X-Men see someone pretending to be Storm and has joined the Hellfire Club. So the X-Men begin to freak out. They are wondering what in the world is going on. They think that Shaw must have her under some kind of control, but we know it is not like that at all. Stevie Hunter, the dance instructor to Kitty Pride, was able to give Storm and Kitty Pride a ride to the X Mansion, except once Storm and Kitty Pride leave Stevie Hunter behind to save the X Men, well, she is captured by Emma Frost and Sebastian Shaw just like that. That leads us to see Storm trying to build a connection between her and Kitty Pryde Minds by using Emma Frost's powers. Of course, she was able to, but it was hard work. But the reason why she did that is that so Kitty Pryde is able to sneak into the mansion and pick a lock to let Storm in. Now, Kitty Pryde is able to do it, but just barely before, Storm was about to be captured by Emma Frost and Sebastian Shaw. Once we get inside, Kitty Pryde was grabbed by Wolverine, letting us know that he has broken free, meaning that they are going to be able to break the rest of the X-Men out as well. Of course, this leads into a big battle between the X-Men and the Hellfire Club. This is Chris Claremont bringing his story to a close, because the reason why I say that is when you have Emma Frost and Sebastian Shaw get into the battle. 
but the battle is so intense the X-Men have fought these guys before. They are able to get the edge on the Hellfire Club, except with Emma Frost using her powers of Storm, she on accident struck Sebastian Shaw with a lightning bolt, so he is out cold, but now Storm powers are going out of control. Chris Claremont works quickly on this ending. Storm used the powers of Emma Frost to switch their bodies back to each other, so that takes care of the powers going out of control and Storm getting her body back. Then you have Storm use her powers to knock out Emma Frost, so letting us know that the story is over and the Hellfire Club is defeated once again. The X-Men really let her go, but we know it is Chris Claremont putting them on the back burner for now, letting them come back for a later story. But this is where we are going to end today's comic book video. So please hit that like button down below and subscribe. Also, if you have any suggestions on books I should read, well please let me know in the comments below because you never know, your suggestion could be a future video down the road. But I do hope you enjoy today's comic book video.